Well, hey, McFly subscribers. So this is what I will be tying today. This is McFly Angler. starts now and this is actually for a customer um, that bought it uh, Ryan you guys know um, if you follow my Instagram or have seen some of the other videos you know Ryan he's in Florida and he fishes a lot for tarpon he likes these little small black flies for tarpon but we're doing something a little different with it uh, it's pretty much the same as the previous ones I've done and I'll put up a, a picture really quick of the last ones I did for him. The only difference is these have a, a squirrel tail so you want to put the hook securely in your vise of course and the hook I'm using today is a Gamagatsu SL 12 S which is the short. These are pretty strong hooks and fairly sharp as well. Great little tarpon hooks. I'm going with the with the short because he wanted these to be two inches long and he wanted that tail to move a lot. So if we so if we just have a short little tail like this, a long shank, that's not gonna move very much. You want you want a little more length. Alright guys, so here's a squirrel tail. They come in a couple different colors, so you can always tie them in another color if you want. With the same kind of style fly but I I cut like a little notch at the back just kind of taper that a little bit more and then a lot of times he's getting matted down and shaped weird so um, we are going to measure this out we want it as you can see about there so we're going to do the same thing with this one so wherever you have it you want to pull back the fibers here I'm going to wet them just to make sure they stay back. Okay, you want it right on top. We're just going to make two really tight wraps right on top. And this, by the way, <laughs> is Vivis 140 power thread. As you can see, the 140 there. And it's in black. And this is really strong stuff. Okay, next I have this dubbing brush that I made uh, with craft fur. And I'll show you guys right now kind of how I made it. But basically, I just lay craft fur down and then. On top of that, I put a little bit of flash, okay, and then you spin it up and it uh, creates yourself a brush. If you have a uh, dubbing table, if not, you could always do a dubbing loop and do the same thing, but I find that the brush is much easier, more durable as well. All right, so we are going to pull off a little bit to expose the wire, and then we're just going to tie this in with two wraps on the side. Pull this up. Wrap up. Now, you can see I separated, but a little further past the hook eye there, okay? Because I wanna get a little bit of the fiber in, and that'll create a bushier head So tie, you know, two to three tight wraps and then back up on it. You want some stronger scissors since you're cutting into the hide. You really want to cut that super close. Perfect. All right. So now, 
Now you could do this where you just tie the tail in and then wrap this around. You don't have to go up through the fiber, which is a little more difficult to be honest. But I find that this makes a transition a little better. Okay, I find it's worth the, the extra effort. So you're just gonna separate the fibers and wind through them like so. This also really ensures that that hide is on there really tight because the wire is going over it. Wet your fingers, get that, that fiber out of the way. Okay. And you can pull back everything like so. And you're wrapping over it. There you go. I like to make two wraps right in front and then you just capture the wire. You want to try to trap as little of the fiber as possible. Try to get just down to the wire. So two wraps over it. Pull everything back. Wet your fingers. Make sure all those fibers are back. Wrap back up on it. You can actually, since it's wire, you can helicopter it off. Now this brush wire that I use for the dubbing brush, <clears throat> it's a little more stretchy. Kind of flexes a little better. Which makes it not break off as easily. But also makes that a little harder. You could tell that was uh, just a little longer to to kind of helicopter it off, but it will work. All right, so once you do that, then you are done with the tying portion. You can go ahead and whip finish. It doesn't have to be a crazy whip finish. Four or five turn is just fine. After you do that, you just want to pick this out, make sure that there's no trap fibers, which can happen. Okay. So personally, I like a little bit longer fiber in the head here like this. You can see it kind of wisps back and transitions nice into that tail. I like that look, but the customer of mine that uh, he wanted this a little shorter, as you can see, that's a little shorter, right? And those fibers. So I just trim it. We are going to do a little bit of trim. Just transitioning into that tail. And we're going to, we're going to trim the side as well. But we'll finish up the trimming after we add the eyes. We're just going to get a rough trim here. All right, and if you guys have seen the channel before, you know how I usually like to do my eyes. Everyone has their own way of doing certain things, and this is my favorite way to add eyes. So I just take a gel type super glue, a little dot there, and you can see that I'm placing the eye on where it's almost up touching the, the hook eye, right? Alright, so those, you want to make sure that they're even. You can see on the front, up top, they look even, but you also want to take it out of the vise and look at it head on. It actually turned out pretty well. And there's a little adjusting that need to happen. There we go, make that even, and then you want that to dry. All right, so once that dries, I have this. It's Solares Ultra Thin, or actually, sorry, the regular thin, the thin hard formula. Um, we will be using the Ultra Thin in a second, but this has a nice little uh, tip on it. Now they don't sell these anymore, the metal ones, but the plastic ones are just as good. They have some plastic um, tips, and those are, you know, they're really fine. It allows you to get in. You can see there's like a little cavity in between the eyes there. So what we're going to do is I just place this in between because that super glue has got it held on. The problem is once something bites and those eyes get compressed, 
a lot of times they can, you know, bend, you know, uh, and they will, it'll break that seal and they'll come off. So this basically puts something in between that in the space and it really helps keep them on. All right, and you can see that I've got this angled where the hook is angled back. Same thing when I was, you know, I had it angled back going from the top. Now we're gonna do this on the bottom, the same thing. I like to wet the fibers, make sure they're laying down. Again, angle back so that way it doesn't run up into the eye. There's a cavity here as well. And just cure that with the light. If you guys haven't seen UV resin before, basically it's, uh, it's great stuff. Um, it's really useful in fly tying, but this light, you just bump, you hit it with the light, the UV light, and it hardens it. So it goes from liquid to, re it's, it's a resin, it's really hard. And so it's, uh, it's really useful stuff because you can cure it right away. It's kind of like five minute epoxy, but instant. So that's, that's really helpful. All right, and for the final thing, I like using the, the ultra thin, or they call the bone dry. Um, it could be named either, but the solar as ultra thin. And it's really thin stuff, but it comes with a little paintbrush. And you just paint it on. And this is just gonna cover the eyes and cover everything. And it's gonna just make this really durable and give it a nice glossy finish. So if there is any products that you want to get that I've used, I will link everything that I use today in the description section of the video. Uh, my sponsor is Risen Fly. Okay, so um, definitely check them out. www.risenfly.com And uh, type in McFly at checkout and you'll get 15% off of anything you buy in their shop. Now we're just going to try to trim this a little bit more because I know that he likes it more trimmed. But anyway, yeah, check out Risen. Um, also, I, I link a lot to the fly artist as well. Um, I work with them. Um, my links to the fly artist are uh, uh, affiliate links, so I do make a little bit off of those links. So it really helps out the channel if you click those, but, uh, you know, they're really good price, so it's not like you're paying extra to help <laughs> help the channel. It's actually really, really good price and, and great customer service there. So check them out as well. Helps the channel out, and I think you'll be really satisfied, really happy with placing orders with them. And like I said, all the all the materials I use are linked down there, either to Risen or the Fly Artist. There we go. Came out looking pretty good, and that's it. This tail will wiggle. Um, this is pine squirrel, so you could technically tie these a little bit larger if you wanted, and do a rabbit if you wanted these larger. But he wanted a two inch, so I wanted to make sure this is going to move. And since it's a smaller, finer um, material, that's going to move a little better in the water than rabbit at this size. But there we go. Um, he just wanted a tail that's going to wiggle a lot, and he wanted a natural material like this. So I think this is going to work great for him. He should catch quite a few tarpon. Well, thanks for watching, guys. If you want to place an order, you can do so by finding me on Instagram. That's the best place. If you don't have Instagram, Facebook works as well. If you don't have any kind of social media, um, you can find my email by just going to the About section on my YouTube homepage, and you should be able to find my email there. Um, if you have trouble, just go ahead and um, let me know here, and I'll do my best to try to guide you how to, how to place an order. Well, I will see you guys in the next video. Now you go catch some fish.